Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here with another C Sharp tutorial to help you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with a simple verify user login system for C Sharp. This will also work with Unity if you want to use it in your Unity game. So, this system is going to take in a username and a password. This can be from a user input if you want to. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if that username and password can be found in the file on the same line. So what do I mean? So we've got a little text file called logins.txt. And we've got a username followed by a password for each line or record of this file. Let's say we input Jeff is the username and 123 is the password. Well, it's going to say that's a, a correct login because there is a username of Jeff with a password of 123. Let's say we type in Jeff, but we input password as the password. That's not a correct login because Jeff's password isn't password, it's 123. If we were to type in Elon for the username and Dogecoin 2 mars 69420 that would be a valid and correct login because Elon's password in this system is Dogecoin to mars 69420 so that's basically what the system's going to do. For the purpose of this program, we're just going to have our text file stored right next to our application file. In the context of Visual Studio and using the debugger, it's going to be in your project folder bin debug netcore app 3.1 folder. And then you can put in your text file here. If you use a different ID or Unity, you're going to have to put it somewhere else. And you're going to have to look where that is by default if you don't want to include any folders to your file path. With that out of the way, let's get right into what's going on. So, inside our main method, we're going to have string username equals Jeff, string password equals 123, and string file path equals logins.txt. Please bear in mind you can replace all of these with some form of input I'm just having some variables for the purpose of this tutorial. Then we're going to do console.writeLine and inside we're going to call a function called verifyLogin which is going to take in the username, the password and the file path. And then we're going to do console.readLine just so we, we can see the program running and it doesn't terminate straight away. Don't worry about this line, this will make more sense once we go through the tutorial. So. Now we're going to make our function. It's going to be a public static boolean. This means it's going to return a true or false. We can return true or false to determine if the login was successful or not. Then we can do verify login, string username, string password and string file path. This is going to be a parameter to take a username. This is going to be a parameter to take in a password and this is going to be a parameter to take in the file path to conduct the search on. The first line of code we want to do, we want to do string array lines equals system.io.file.readAllLines at then the variable name of our file path string, which in this case is file path. What's going to basically happen is we're going to read every single line in the file and each line is going to get its own field or element of this string array. So in the context of our logins.txt, Jeff, 123 will go in one element. Mike, comma, password will go in another element. Elon, Dogecoin, to Mars, 69420 will go in its own element. Rocketman, comma, GME will go in its own element. And then after we've read everything into the string array, we can then examine each line individually to check if there's a match. The next thing we want to do is we want to make a simple for loop. We want to do for int i equals zero, i less than line stop length and i plus plus. What's going on here? We are simply going to loop through this entire file. And we want to loop through the whole file so we can essentially check each user login details or field to see if our username and password matches. Inside here is where the magic's going to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to make a string array and we're going to call it field. And it's going to equal lines i, which is referring to the current field or element of our lines array we're currently analyzing. And we're going to split 
each bit of data and give it its own field in our field string array. And we're going to do that based on where a comma is. So what's going to happen is basically we're going to read a line. So let's say that line is for Jeff line. So currently we have lines I as Jeff comma one, two, three. And what this dot split function is going to do is it's going to be like, right, let's read up to the comma. So it's going to read Jeff. Let's put that in its own element of the field array. Then it's going to read up until the end of the line or the next comma. So it's going to be read one, two, three and put that in its own element of the field string array that we've just created in this loop iteration. And then once we separate everything, it's very easy to access and do simple comparisons. So what's going on here? Well, we're going to do an if statement. If field zero dot equals username and field one dot equals password return true. What we're doing is we're checking if field zero is equal to the username and then we're going to check if field one is equal to the password. So we're checking if the username we're reading equals the username we've inputted and if the password we're reading is equal to the password we've inputted. Both of these have to match though. So we need to, both of these to be true because we don't want someone entering the correct username and then entering someone else's password and then logging in. That's not how passwords work. The password hash, the password you enter has to be the password of that username to get the login. So that's why we're using the AND operator because we need both of these statements to be true for the login to be correct and therefore to signal to the program they've entered the correct details, let's log in. So we're going to have a return true here. Underneath that for loop, we're going to just have a simple return false. And you might wonder why. Well, if we've looped through this whole file and we have not found a login, then that means what the user inputted isn't correct, therefore return a false. I would also like to say that if you want, you can actually put all of this code in a try catch statement. I've chosen not to for once because you don't need to. It's considered good to have some kind of error exception handling, which a try catch is one of the ways of going about doing so. We're just going to delete a couple of empty lines to make the code neater. And that's it. We have finished making a, a simple user login system. So what are we going to do? We're going to hit Control S to save our code, and then we're going to click the play button. And with the details of Jeff as the username and 123 as the password, it printed true because Jeff and 123 match. They're in the file as a record, as a login record. Let's try the system with 1234, which, as we know, isn't a valid password for any username called Jeff. As you can see, it prints a false. How about we try Jeff's username with Mike's password? Let's see what happens. As you can see, it returns a false. We can't log into someone's username using someone else's password. That's not how it works. Now let's try Rocketman's username with Mike's password. And it returns false. So that's the program in action. Thank you for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more. If you've got any questions or any suggestions or just want to say how awesome I am, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for being a great audience and I'll see you next time.